Hello, my lovelies. My name's Gilbert Dovalian, and the plan for today is to show you how to finish an embroidery hoop so that the back is all neatly finished and hidden away. Now, some of you might remember that almost a year ago now, I did a mini series showing you how I set up my embroidery patterns and get my embroidery hoops ready to go. And this is not quite the final part on this because I'm gonna show you how to do canvases as well, but this is the final stage of that. If you're interested in the main stitches that I use for embroidery, you can find the 102 video that I did for CocoVid here. And that covers a lot of the stitches that I use, but I do want to cover some more on the sewing dictionary eventually. And if that isn't enough links to keep you busy, then I don't know what else to say. Thanks to a number of things, mainly 2020 and depression, I'm still actually working on the embroidery from that video. But as you can see, it is starting to make some progress. But since I'm in a new location, as you can see, I needed something to fill this gap on the wall and I figured now was the time to finally finish the embroidery I made for my intro. So, finally, after a year or so, let me show you how I finish embroidery hoops. So the first step is to make a piece to cover the back with. Use the inside hoop of the frame, the smaller one, to mark a circle on a piece of fabric and cut it out slightly larger than that. You can use whichever fabric takes your fancy. I suggest sticking with something thinner, but this is a great use for pieces of mock-ups or any scrap pieces lying around. You can even embroider your initials or logo if you have one if you'd like, though obviously do it before you cut it out. I'm using my pinking shears just to be safe, but all the raw edges are going to be covered, so there's nothing wrong with just using your normal fabric scissors either. Once you have your back piece, pin it down, folding it just behind the drawn circle so your final piece is a little bit smaller than the back hoop. You can take more or less time on this to get it as neat as possible, but since it's on the back, I'm never too neat. I find the best method is to fold one section, jump forward a couple of centimetres and then fold again, and then the section in between should fold easily. At this stage, you could jump ahead to the next step, but I find it's easiest to tack it down first so all the pins aren't in the way when you try and sew. As you can see, this amount of pins are a pain in the ass, even just tacking down. I fluffed up a little bit here, you should try and start and end with the tails of your thread on the outside of the fabric to make it easier to remove them once you're done. But just sew down around the entire circle with an easy running stitch. Now it's time to turn to your actual embroidery. It should be in the hoop tightened and aligned to how you want it. You're not going to be able to change it after this point, so get it exactly how you want it. The excess material needs to be gathered, so the first step is to run a gathering stitch around the hoop. You want it to be about half a centimetre away from the edge of the hoop, so you can cover it with the back piece, but you just need to run a running stitch the entire way around the hoop. I like to double up my thread to make it stronger, and if you're using a particularly thick material, you're going to want strong thread as well. Use a complementary thread because it's going to stay in there and it might end up showing depending on how precise you are. I also do two circles because I find it makes a tighter circle. Normally, when I'm not focusing on making sure I'm in shot, I try and line the stitches up with the first circle. 
but I didn't do that this time and it really didn't cause too many problems, so don't worry too much about it. Make sure to finish with the thread coming out of the top of the material and don't finish it off for now. At this stage, if you haven't done already, trim off the excess. You can do this before you sew your gathering stitch and that will make stitching easier because you're not dealing with it, but I like to leave it until last so I can trim it down more precisely. You want it to end about a centimetre or so past the end of your gathering stitches and the less excess there is, the easier it will be to gather everything up neatly. Speaking of gathering, it's time for the satisfying part. Watch it go! I did a little fine tuning to make sure it was tight, but this is the fun part. Once you've got it as tight as it will go, tie off the end with a couple of stitches, and that's that bit. And the last step is to cover up those raw edges with the back piece that we prepared earlier. When I was getting used to this technique, I found that I always ended up with excess towards the end. So I always try and start on the bottom because if you have excess behind the join, it'll be more noticeable. Start it off with your back piece just covering the gathering stitches and whip stitch it into place, keeping it taut the whole way round. Try and check regularly that it's not drifting too much so it stays in the center and you don't end up with too much in one place and too little in another. And when you reach the end, tie off your thread, pull out the tacking stitches if you have them, and that's it, your piece is all finished. The very final step is to make a hook to hang it with. I like to use a piece of the embroidery thread because I almost always have one left over, but a ribbon would work just as well. You can also just hang it by using the join, but you run the risk of it getting knocked. And then display your work proudly or pass it on to its new owner. And that's it. It's a pretty simple and easy technique that covers a multitude of sins on the back of your embroideries. You can definitely spend more or less time on it. As you can see, I air towards less time and making it less perfect, but I'm afraid that's just me in general. So if you want to spend the time to get it perfect, I don't blame you, you're doing a good thing. There's also a lot of variations you can do on this. I used a matching piece of fabric, but you could equally well go for a contrasting piece or contrasting thread if you want to make a 
feature of it. Like I said, you could also embroider something on the back before you sew it on, that would also work well. Like the embroidery itself, it's personal, and I know you're gonna take this method and make it into your own thing. So go ahead and play with it and get it how you like it. My question for you today is how precise are you on your finishing touches? Are you one of those people who finish a project and then it's done and you don't need to spend the time to finish it off? Or are you one of those people who has to finish every single little piece of it so the inside is just as perfect as the outside? I would kind of put myself in the middle. I always finish my seams and I always have done since I started sewing, but it's mainly just because I'm paranoid about things coming apart when I wash them. So it's definitely not as perfect on the inside as the outside but they're equally, they are finished. This doesn't have to be sewing, by the way, this can be any sort of project that you're working on. Woodcraft, for example, or knitting. I don't know, how do you even finish knitting? There's a question for you. Thank you for watching through to the end, and as always, a huge thank you to all of my lovely subscribers. If you enjoyed this or found it helpful, please think about giving me a like or subscribing for more sewing and costume related content. Stay safe, Stay sensible and I shall see you again soon. Bye. There is the 102 stitching I did for CoCovid video, which you can find here. And that one, Wait, is that the right side? I don't know, is that the right side? Is it this side? Who knows? I'm gonna do both, because I'm smart.